الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين I greet you all with the greeting of Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh May the peace and the blessing of Almighty Allah be with you all We continue with our series concerning Sha'ab al-Iman branches of faith and this chapter or segment number 42 from Sha'ab al-Iman branches of faith and this explanation of hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is the meaning is al-imanu bid'u wa sab'una shu'ba iman faith belief is 70 some branches the highest of it is the tawheed is the uttering of la ilaha illallah that there is no deity worthy of worship other than allah rabbil alameen the lowest branch or level of faith is to remove the harmful things from the road and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said and to be shy and bashful is a branch of faith. So it is a duty of the Muslims to search and to get to know about these branches of faith so they can be familiar with it, they can act upon it, they can strengthen their Iman. And the more that you strengthen your Iman, the more that you closer to Allah, that you more distant away from the Shaitan. So today, inshallah, we're talking about Al-Iqtisad fi Nafaqa wa Tahreem Akl al-Mal bil Batil to be reasonable in the way how you spend your money and also the chapter concerning devouting unlawful money so this is two things two duties <clears throat> one is recommended and one is forbidden the recommended issue concerning money that you have iqtisad, that you be reasonable, that you be reasonable in the way how you spend your money. And the other part of this chapter is prohibition of receiving haram unlawful income, things which has is doubtful or is haram like gambling 
receiving money from gambling is haram by tricking people or deceiving people is haram usury is haram selling things that Allah forbid like khamr as example or selling gold to men there is a lot of things or dealing with fabricating and making musical instruments or teaching music or selling things that you usually use for some haram all these things is not acceptable in Islam and this due to the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Isra verse number 29 وَلَا تَجْعَلْ يَدَكَ مَغْلُولَةً إِلَىٰ عُنُقِكَ وَلَا تَبْسُطْهَا قُلَّ الْبَسْطِ فَتَقْعُدَ مَلُومًا مَحْسُورًا This Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us that don't let your hand tie to your neck. Neither you extend your hand and open it all the way. And as a result of this, you be blamed, worthy of blame, and you will be sorry. That means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave an example, a person who his hand is so tight, is not spending in the cause of Allah, is not given in charity, is not assist the people. This a person or he is not taking care of his family. Like a person tying his hand to his neck. Okay? So you are not going to feel good in this situation or this position. Neither you go to the other extreme. That the person need to be reasonable. Don't keep your hands so tight to your neck like this. And don't open it all the way down like this takes the middle course okay there is needs and necessity in life so now you spend all right and there is a way people showing off and wasting money don't take this course so there is two courses and both of them are unacceptable in Islam one course that you be miser you be bakhil you be stingy okay you don't buy fruits to your family, as example, okay? No, this enough. You eat the rice and the beans and this it. Not even once a week, not even once a month, okay? Why you are not supposed to eat cake? Not because you understand it has sugar, but because that he doesn't want to spend. Now you tie in your hand. You bring it so close to your neck. And this position is not right, is not beneficial for you. And another people spending money about musical instruments, TV, about unnecessary things, okay? Every couple of months changing the color of the bedroom, painting it, uh, doing spending on the garden outside only for looks and things like this which are unnecessary, okay? We are not saying it's haram to have a garden and have a beautiful house, but keep spending, spending like this. This two extremes. So how you have to be reasonable with your money and your spending and taking care of your family and helping other people who are in need. So both, both positions are undesirable in Islam. That you hold your hands so tight. Or that you open your hands so open. No, take the middle course. In everything, in everything, especially about money. Why? Because you work hard to make this money. Unless a person is stealing, and this is haram, or gambling, so money comes so fast, okay? 
or you go to this book machine or lottery ticket or all these things, okay? And you keep playing these games and getting money. So you are not sweating for this money. So as a result of this, because it's coming so easy for you, so now you keep spending it in any things, okay? So this position in Islam is not acceptable, all right? Because even if you're taking care of your family, it still there is a rights of other Muslims who less fortunate than you, that you're supposed to help them, giving them zakah, giving them sadaqah, giving them charity, these things also part of our deen. Not to be selfish, not to be greedy, not to be only thinking about yourself and your family. All right? Yeah. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Furqan, verse number 67, Allah describing the good people, the slave servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah talk highly about them. And one of their quality, Allah is saying what? وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَنْفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا وَلَمْ يَقْتُرُوا وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامًا Those when they spend, they did not open their hands so loose. Neither they hold their hand tight. Which two expressions saying that you be wasting your money and the other one that you holding tight, that you only taking by drops, giving it by drops. But Allah saying, وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامًا that mean he didn't go to any of the two extremes. He will be what? Taking the middle course. When there is a need or desirable course to spend, you spend. But if there is no necessity or there is no need for spending, you don't spend. You have to learn how to utilize this money. And you have to remember that you're going to be questioned. Okay? In the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah, okay, عن ماله من أين اكتسبه وفيما أنفقه. You're going to be questioned in the day of judgment about your income. How did you earn it and how did you spend it? Because possibility you earn your dollar from halal sources. But after this you spend it in haram sources. Possibility that you earn it from haram and after this is spending it in halal. But still both of them wrong. You don't get haram income, no, neither you're supposed to spend the money in haram. Okay? So a person has to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is tayyib La yaqbalu illa tayyiba. Allah is good and He only accepts what is good. And you, as a Muslim, you're supposed to be good in the way how you talk, the way you walk, the way that you give, the way you take. When you give, you give when it's needed. When you withhold, because it's forbidden. All right? You don't spend it in gambling. You don't uh, understand cheat people. So you have to. Learn that this money is ni'mah from Allah, is a gift from Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ni'mah, He wants two things from you. One the way how you get it, and the way how you dispense it. Okay? The way how you take the money, and the way how you disperse the money. Hadith al mughira ibn Shu'bah, may Allah be pleased with him. Watch in the collection of Imam al-Bukhari, rahmatullahi alayhi. Naha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an thalath. Qila wa qal. Wa ida'at al-mal wa kathrat al-su'al. That Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbid three things. Allah forbid three things. He said, <clears throat> they said wasting the money too, un, too much unnecessary question 
This is three things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislike it, that the Prophet sallallahu forbid it, it shouldn't be, it's not supposed to be part of our behavior as a Muslims. Number one, qila wa qal. People said they have nothing except being nosy. You understand what this, when telling you this? Okay, don't be nosy. Oh, why is this sister wearing this? Or oh, why is this brother, you understand, talking to this? Why you understand, how did they bought this car? These people did not even have a job. Or oh, why, where these people go? You keep, stay, focus in yourself. Get busy with yourself. And like they say, when you point finger to somebody, four fingers point back to you. Okay? Say, oh, look, look. Look what he's doing. Look what they doing. Okay? Your eyes is so big to see what people are doing. But you are not opening your eyes in yourself. Busy watching what other people are saying, what other people are doing, but you are not focusing in yourself. When you get busy with what people are doing, you forget yourself. Okay? We, all of us, all of us have faults, have mistakes, have errors, and we have to be so busy how we improve ourselves, okay? So some people, when they say they have nothing to talk about other than, oh, do you know so-and-so? He did this. Oh, do you know so-and-so? I was driving and I saw him in such a place. And, and keep going like this. This, this, is, this is bad. This is bad, okay? Say, but I'm not lying. I saw them myself. <coughs> but, okay, even if you saw them yourself, cover your brother's fault, okay? Why are you talking about? Oh, yeah, because you understand. These people, they think because they grow their beard, they so good. Yeah, doesn't matter if the good is so bad. What is your business? You really care? Go and take this person to the side. Akhi, I want to give you advice for Allah's sake. This is haram. You are not supposed to be doing this. And, okay? Cover your faults. Cover your brother's fault. Okay? Cover your sister's fault. Don't to keep you under the sunset in the <laughs> gathering. Okay? Sipping tea or eating cake and talking about, oh, guess what? What? I was in the flea market and I saw this brother was selling just stuff for Allah. He was selling. He said, oh man, he comes in the masjid and he act as if he saw. Why all this talk? And guess what? Sister so-and-so told me sister so-and-so and brother so and these people got divorced and these people got married and this person understands it. Okay? He said, she said, she said, they said, said, okay? This is, stay away from this. It's not your business. Don't be, oh, how did they buy this money? These people just got in the company, understand? A month ago, how they got this money to buy a car like this? What is your business? What is your business? How they bought it? Why you don't stick to your own business? Huh? What's the second thing? The Prophet ﷺ forbid us to say waste of the money. Wasting the money. Oh, what are you going to do with this? Ah, I really saw it and the price was good, so I bought it. But what are you going to do with it? It, it looks nice. How much it's been? Um, it was not that bad. Actually, it was an auction, and I bet $200 on it, okay? After one week, go in the attic. What is there? The attic, okay? You open this thing in the roof, and you storage it there, because you have nothing to do with it. You bought it because it looks nice. But after it looks nice, so are you going to eat it? No. You going to wear it? No. What are you going to do? It looks nice. The price was reasonable. Yeah, but 
reasonable what you, how much you spend. Ah, oh, brother, I, I, I don't want to talk about it really, but it, will, well, it was a good bargain. But what are you going to do with it? It's a nice piece of uh, decoration. I can hang it in the wall. Okay. He didn't hang it in the wall. He didn't do anything with it. Waste of money. Some people, okay. Oh, you, I'm going to Walmart. Would you like to go to Walmart? What are you going to Walmart for? Uh, no, really. I see, I understand. I maybe like, I see something that I would like to buy. But what is the need to go to Walmart? You're going to spend, you understand, a couple of dollars in gas. Plus, more than important than money, you're going to be spending half an hour driving. You can be in the masjid. You can be reading a book. You can be assisting another Muslim. Ah, oh, no, 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 man. It's my weekend. Okay? Waste of the money. Waste of money. Why did you buy this? Now one shoulder go up and one shoulder go down. I, I really, I like it. I like it. Okay? Yeah. إِضَاعَةِ الْمَالِ Waste of the money. And the last thing is what? كَثْرَةُ السُّؤَالِ Unnecessary. And too much question. Okay? How did he ma? Oh. What did he say what? He was going, where? Yeah, and you saw it? Oh, yeah. And you saw this? Yeah. But how? I don't know. So I'm wondering, man, how they got it. Okay? Too many questions. Being what? What do you call it? Nosy. Being nosy. Focus in yourself. Focus in your home. Try to look in the mirror, see. See yourself, okay? When you see yourself, you start to clean your face. I'm not mean physically your face, okay? But focus in yourself because each one of us has something that we need to get rid of it. Bad habit or whatever it is. But when you're busy about asking about this and that, it's not related to you. It's not going to benefit you in anything. Because the, mo the moment that you start to open your mouth and talk, and he will talk, and you go in and the conversation, and have a nice time, and you understand, it's going to go, and after say, oh, okay, I tell you one thing more. Do you know this brother so, he used to be in Colombia, yeah, and he moved to Florida. Oh, yeah, 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 I didn't see. I guess, man, what happened? And he married to this sister, and after this, and they did this, and they did that, and... And keep going, keep going for a whole hour. Backbiting, slandering, talking about people, busy about what's doing. So. And after this, if you ask him, read the Fatiha, he doesn't know how to read it right. Because busy talking about other people and not focusing about himself. How long, brother, it took Shahada? Five years. He said, Maghduba, Maghdubi, Maghda, okay? Why? Because busy talking. So let's understand that part of Sha'ab al-Iman, one of the branches of faith, that you be mindful about how you're spending the money, okay? And how that a person to avoid the haram income, and that the person... To be a good believer, he has to focus in one of these branches and develop it and make it part of his personality, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to put in action what we heard this morning. If anybody have a comments or concern, you may feel to present it, inshallah.
قيل وقال وكثرة السؤال وإضاعة المال being wasteful of the money the third one he said she said many questions okay number one he said she said unnecessary question and waste of the money this is three let me count and make maybe I'm making a mistake قِيلَ وَقَالْ he said she said all right this is one people talking about okay the second one too many questions number three waste of the money is it still three Okay, I'm sorry, my broken English. Okay. All right. Any comments, any correction? What you got, Brother Rafiq, for today? <laughs> Some chicken? Everything's good. But alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, glad to hear this. Brother Rafiq, he gave a demonstration uh, or a life example. Try to tell us, you guys, you young people, Okay, supposed to be here in Fajr. Okay, supposed to be frequent the mosque. Okay, I'm telling you, he said, okay, look at me, look to my condition, look to my age, look to my nice beard with henna, but I still try to make it for Fajr. So that for you guys, okay, you should be before me here. This is what he tried to make his presence here to let you know this, inshallah. Okay? So hopefully that we always remember and Brother Rafi. Uh, it's been a blessing. Uh, you know Brother Madi. You remember Brother Madi? Trying to. Man, he used to be real tight traveling. Uh, okay. He's married to the uh, Bangladesh sister who. Is that a pico? <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. He's our big brother. He's older than me. Still, uh, I think he told me 80, 87 or something like that. Brother Majid. Well, tall. Taller guy. Uh, an army, retired army guy. Yeah. Yeah. Every day is a beautiful day. Oh, oh, Abdul Majid. <laughs> <laughs> Every day a good day. Yeah. Uh, Abdul Majid. It's been a blessing. We kind of hook back up now, so when you don't see me here on the weekdays, I'm at Masjid Al Quran because he picks me up. MashaAllah. So it's still a struggle to catch all the prayers, but. Uh, MashaAllah. <laughs> MashaAllah. Pick it back up. May Allah bless you and bless him and bless all the Muslims everywhere. And I think this is a good listen by action. Okay, some people give lessons, like myself, give talk. And some people, by their actions, they teach the people. And may Allah bless us with eyes that can reflect and ears that can hear. So it's not only by hearing, it's by seeing. Okay? And we'll try to be a good example for others, inshallah. And people, you understand that also is not in the age of Rafiq, but between Rafiq and Farid, will be example for other kids, inshallah. Zakumullah khairan. And we'd like to welcome brother Joshua. <laughs> you see, one of the early birds. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> the brother love, the brother loves the community so much that he doesn't want to go back home. <laughs> you see? Can you imagine this? So Alhamdulillah, and may Allah give us the ability to love him back the way how he loves us and loves the mosque. And him and Muhammad is too, too much, too much for me. MashaAllah. <laughs> in, in a good sense. Okay? Yeah. So Alhamdulillah, this is a good addition to the community. Alhamdulillah. And we got Brother Mateel last night. Okay? Yeah, and, I missed him. Yes. Yeah, I used to go to the prison to see the brother. Yes. He was, uh, as soon as my said, he was standing right in back of me. But because, I guess, when I used to go see him, I didn't have red hair. 
Yes, he didn't recognize me. He was standing right in back me, and I didn't know it. You know? Subhanallah. Yes, he was here last night, and alhamdulillah, he got married, and I'm so happy for him. Yeah. And I give him the, what you call this trophy, uh, <laughs> an, an invisible, invisible trophy. Yeah. I told him that you are a hero, and his wife is a hero. I mean it. Yeah. This person and this is stuck with, Stuck with it for 40 years, man. Subhanallah. He was patient. He halted his deen. You understand? In the prison, learning, teaching, and alhamdulillah. And finally, he's out now. So alhamdulillah. May Allah bless all the Muslims everywhere, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us good and strong believers, inshallah. You have a blessed day, inshallah. Anybody with a truck here? Open truck. Oh, by the way, what happened to Muhammad? Anybody know? No, I was thinking about him yesterday too. I hope he's not sick. I'll give him a call today. Yeah, they have an update or something? Yes, please. Yeah, um, I spoke to the sister yesterday. She said that he was actually sick. He's what? He's sick, but I didn't get the details. He, he's what? Sick. sick. I didn't get the details. Oh, boy. Stop for Allah. Here a person comes every Fajr, and look, we didn't even ask about him. It's so bad. Yeah, it's so bad. At least a phone call. At least a phone call. La hawla la quwwata. May Allah make it easy for him. May Allah heal him, inshallah. Have a good day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him shifa, inshallah. Ameen. Brothers, you have to be checking in each other, inshallah. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. Can we have a commitment? We have some stuff that we need to move from the mosque to the storage room. So we need somebody to make uh, appointment to see when we can deliver it, and at the same time that we'll be able to take it because it's getting crowded here in the back in the storage room. Can I do it now? Do we have a truck? We can get a truck. I mean, we could put some in mine. Yeah? I'm driving. Oh, You're driving what? Is it bags? Bags, right? A lot of bags? And uh, More than bags. Furniture? Part of it also furniture. Mm. Yeah, we'll see what we can work with. Okay. How many brothers available? Oh, but we need to see if Sister uh, Suraya will be able to come to Oban or not. Yeah, see, if she said yes, now we can. I think Noor also can be available. And Joshua also. <laughs> oh, we have enough people here. All right. Inshallah, let's, uh, the sister make a call first. And after this, if she available, I can go get a truck, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk